Today I will show you how to protect and recover your M365 workloads. So here I'm logged into my Cotisity dashboard. I've chosen the scope selector and specifically already pre-selected data protect. What you can also see here are my other Cotisity workloads. As mentioned, you can gain visibility into everything you've chosen to deploy. So this is our service. We have another Cohesity managed option called for Cohesity Fort Knox, where you can keep clean, isolated copies of your data in the cloud. We also have Cluster Manager, where I can see and manage all my Cohesity clusters that I have. Some of these are vSphere deployed as well. And we can also see Security Center, which allows security administrators and analysts to understand their security posture and access Cohesity's data security capabilities from one application. So everything from a single pane of glass. So I already have Data Protect selected. This is my Data Protect dashboard. And so what I wanted to do next is choose Source. And here we can work through the wizard and end up with registered sources like the ones I have here. I have multiple. Uh, the other thing you can gain through the register sources is, is that you can see when there's things you need to address. So for example, I have some protected objects on the N365 side, which are not in the source anymore. Uh, that's something I wanted or I need to remediate actually. And I left this here because I really think it's important for you to see uh, successes and failures and that you are indeed notified. So next, what I'm going to do is we're going to go ahead and click on my M365 uh, source, Cohesity.rocks. My M365 source has already been registered, as you can see here. So let's move on to talking about backup and recovery of those workloads. So here I have mailboxes. I have OneDrive, Sites, Teams, and Groups. My environment has all these. Uh, we're specifically looking at mailboxes. Um, I have several mailboxes that need to protect it, as you can see. I have some options. I can click here and I could auto protect all of my mailboxes, which allows us to have the flexibility to protect any new users that get added over time. And it'll automatically include those users uh, for protection. So it helps if you're administrating uh, only, you know, so only sometimes have to, you know, come in here and ensure things are protected. Uh, we can also select all objects um, if that's more desirable from an individual perspective. Um, we can make those individual selections of an object. So in my case, I'm going to be scrolling down to Peter Quill, and I'm going to do an individual selection of this object here. And I will go ahead and I'm going to click Protect. Now, to protect, I need a policy. Uh, policies, there are some right here. And ones that are out of the box, as you can see, like gold and silver, you can leverage uh, in our solution. Uh, however, you can also create uh, custom policies um, if you want to. Now, what goes into a policy? Well, first and foremost, a policy is about how often you will protect your data. So I have a custom policy that will back up every six hours, and, but it also uh, will retain how you know that data for two weeks. So these are entirely flexible and customizable, so it's, it's something to be aware of. Um, I will go ahead and I'm going to go and choose my TM policy. And then we're going to choose more options. So from more options perspective, you can uh, get some SLA choices here. Uh, there are other ones I like to call out. Sometimes you have like blackout periods um, or quiet times and uh, start periods where you may not want to run backups because the maintenance tasks are occurring. Uh, you, you can also do that. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and click protect. It's uh, going to be tracked here in the activity log. We'll come back to that shortly. 
Uh, now let's go ahead and look over at OneDrive. So now that you think about when we talked about onboarding simplicity, you'll see many common steps here. So even through this OneDrive, I can auto protect or select uh, all child objects as we uh, saw prior. I can also do uh, the individual protection of data. I'm gonna go ahead and choose Steve Rogers. So let's scroll down here and I'm gonna click on Steve Rogers and then I'm gonna go ahead and click protect. We'll go ahead and choose the same custom TM policy and we're gonna go ahead and click at more options. I see I have the SLA control and those quiet time start periods and blackout windows. Uh, I will go ahead and click protect and uh, that object will be protected. So now let's head over to sites. And so these are our SharePoint sites in terms of my SharePoint sites. Uh, all of my sites are protected. Um, I can also unprotect all those sites if I choose to. If you notice the little A next to all my sites, that means that we have the auto protection in place. And so while that's important when I choose this option, it automatically does not give me the auto protect or select all when I click on sites. Uh, it's because I already use auto protect on this uh, group of systems. Now, I do have the flexibility to no longer use this team sites. I'm going to uncheck this. And just if I want to go ahead and try to just unprotect, I'll choose this team site here and I can unprotect this individual site at the site level. Um, I have the choice to keep or delete my snapshots, uh, for, but for today, I'll keep them and I'm going to go ahead and click unprotect. So now that the object is unprotected, because eventually I'll be de decommissioning this site, I wanted to, uh, to do that individually in our demo today. In terms of teams, I'm gonna go ahead and click over on teams. In terms of teams, if I uh, look here, nothing is protected. So again, I have the option to auto protect or select all. I'm going to choose an individual object I'll go ahead and choose uh, team finance and I can click on protect. And again, you can he come here and you can choose your policy and we can go to more options. And again, you can see your SLAs, your quiet times and your start times. And this is pretty straightforward. I mean, it's it's simple to acclimate to and it has, you know, a lot of the same common steps. I'm gonna go ahead and hit cancel. So let's go ahead and pivot. We're gonna do a couple of restores. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and click back on sources. And then we're gonna click back on my M365 registered source. Again, it's the same process we used before. However, in this case, we're choosing objects that have already been t protected. So I want to do a mailbox recovery and a OneDrive recovery for today. So from the mailbox perspective, we're going to choose Bruce Banner. Uh, we have the choice to recover the entire mailbox or recover mailbox items. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to do a granular level recovery today. So I'm going to click on that. Next, I'm going to put a wildcard in the search. As you can see here, I have a lot of mail in this mailbox. So now in terms of response to Bruce, he specifically asked that we restore two particular items. The first is this is a test. And then the next is Bruce the one with the subject that Bruce, this is Jordan's email from external user. And so what I'm going to do is we're going to go and click on next recover options. And so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to click new location and I'm going to select my registered source 
And then I want to select a restore mailbox that we have created because I want to redirect uh, the recovered mail to this particular mailbox because I don't like overriding things and you know something sometimes things exist and they didn't realize they were there so it's always good to take that extra step of caution so I'm gonna go ahead and do this particular restore uh, but before I do that I do need to name it and I'm gonna click Let's see, I'm gonna go ahead and name it BB underscore restore. And then I'm going to click recover. So now while that's initiating, uh, we'll also go ahead and we'll initiate the OneDrive restore. So let's go over to OneDrive and let's go ahead and do a restore of Frank Castle's OneDrive. Um, again, with the mindset that I want to review the data, we're going to go ahead and uh, recover to my recovery mailbox. So let's go ahead and click uh, recover OneDrive. And we're going to do new location. I'm going to choose my N365 domain. We're going to click our mailbox that we want to redirect this restore to of restore demo. I'm going to name the folder that we're going to restore this to, let's see, FC underscore restore. And we're going to go ahead and click recover. And you can see everything, um, you know, the progress of everything restoring over here in that activity window that just popped out and uh, went away. But here in the short term, we're going to monitor in real time. So we're gonna go over to the um, Restore Demo Mailbox in Outlook. So now we went ahead and we're taking a look at our mailbox. So let's see, let's do a refresh here. And so after the refresh, we can see that BB Restore folder is here and let's and that's running and so let's do one more refresh and we want to make sure that those two messages eventually show up uh, from the granular restore that we did so if we click on the banner and then inbox you can see here that the two emails that we did a granular restore are indeed available the re the this is a test and the one with the subject line that has Jordan email in it. And that's pretty cool. So now what we want to do, let's go over to OneDrive. And what we're going to do is go ahead and do a refresh. And we can see we have that folder that we created to do a restore to. And let's see if the items have actually restored. And we're going to click on Frank Castle. And so here you can see that we have all of Frank Castle's data recovered. So that wraps up my demo.